Hello and welcome to lecture 24 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're, we're going to start one of two lectures on Gram-Schmidt. Now, we won't actually mention the Gram-Schmidt uh, process today, but what we're going to be doing is building the foundation for uh, of mathematical tools that we will need to describe the Gram-Schmidt process, which we'll describe in lecture 25. Instead, what we're going to do today is kind of do a quick summary of what's in section 6.1 and 6.2. Uh, 6.1 is on inner products, length, and orthogonality, and 6.2 is on orthogonal sets. Okay. And just to kind of recap where we were, last time we talked about bases and coordinate systems, and today what you want to think about what we're doing is we're going to talk about good bases in Rn. So there are many, many different bases in Rn, and what we want to do is pick out bases that have nice properties that we can exploit. So in order to talk about what a good basis is, we need to kind of develop a couple more properties about vectors in Rn. And some of you may have seen this before, so it might be review, but for others, it may be new, and I'll quickly explain all the appropriate details. So, First of all, we're going to define the dot product, and the way that we do is do this is we take two vectors, a u and a v, and then the dot product of u and v is defined to be u transpose times v in terms of matrix notation. Oh, maybe I, here, let me erase this and say something first. First of all, we represent the dot product as u dotted by v, and by definition, that's taking the transpose of this vector, thinking of it as now a one by n matrix, and then you're multiplying it by the n by one matrix, and the end result you're going to get is a number. And you can remember this, or you can just remember the formula u1 times v1, u2 times v2, all the way up to un times vn. So we're just doing component-wise multiplication and then adding up all the terms. Here I have a simple example. I have a vector 1, 2, and the vector 3, negative 1, and I want to do the dot product of these two vectors. So I have 1 times 3 plus 2 times negative 1, so I get my answer being 1. Now there's a bunch of properties about dot product uh, that are good to know, and these, pro these properties just follow directly from the definitions. Okay, so that means that if you were to write out the formulas explicitly, you would be able to derive these results. And you can probably guess what many of these things are. So the first one is telling you if you first add two vectors and then do the dot product, it's the same thing as doing the dot product of u and v separately with w and then adding the resulting two numbers. The next statement tells me how scalar multiplication comes into play. And this, so this is the, first, the same thing as first scaling the vector c, uh, sorry, first scaling the vector u by c and then doing the dot product. But it's also the same thing as doing u times c times v. So scaling the, your vector v by c and then doing the dot product with u. And statement three tells me that the order in which I do the dot product doesn't matter. And this is one of these statements that very easily follows from the definition because it doesn't matter which way you multiply the numbers together. I could have had v1 times u1 plus v2 times u2 and so on. And then the last statement tells me that the dot product of a vector with itself is zero if and only if the vector was, it was zero to begin otherwise, uh, be, was zero to begin with otherwise the dot product of u with itself is actually a number strictly bigger than zero. Okay. So these are some nice properties of the dot product. The other property that we need is the notion of a length or norm of a vector. And I'll just, I started writing out the definition, so let me finish it. So the length of a vector v is defined as follows. So we use this notation, two absolute value signs here um, on either side. And this is going to be defined to be the first coordinate squared, the second coordinate squared, all the way up to the last coordinate squared, and then you take the square root of the resulting number. Now, as I said, it's sometimes called the length of a vector, and to kind of understand why this is a good name, let's look at a vector in R2. So if we take the vector v, 
uh, in R2, the form AB, then the formula tells me that the length of this vector is a squared plus b squared, the square, the square root of a squared plus b squared. And if you think about it for a minute, you know, you've seen something like this formula here many, many, many times in your mathematical career. So let me just be a little bit more precise here. Let's say here is a and here is b, and you're looking at the vector right here, the vector a, b, then what is this value right here? Well, by the Pythagorean theorem, right, this has length a squared plus b squared by the Pythagoras theorem. So what's happening in Rn is we're just generalizing this notion that we have in R2 uh, to uh, Rn, to an arbitrary vector, or, or sorry, an arbitrary n-dimensional, uh, arbitrary Rn. A couple uh, things that might be useful to note is that we can actually write the norm of a vector in terms of the dot product. We can write it as v dotted with itself and then taking the square root. That's another way of defining the norm. And we say that u is a unit vector if its length is one. So a unit vector is just a vector whose length is one or its norm is one. And then we come to a definition that kind of is going to drive the rest of our two lectures, which is the notion of two vectors being orthogonal. And two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is equal to zero. So you have two vectors, mostly not, uh, they could be, they, no. Sorry, let me rephrase that. These vectors here don't have to be zero, but when you take the dot product of those two vectors, you get the zero and get zero. And we're not going to elaborate on this. This would something you would see more in the second linear algebra class. Um, what it, does it kind of mean geometrically for two vectors to be orthogonal? Well, two vectors are orthogonal really means that u and v are perpendicular to each other. Now, perpendicular is a geometric term. So normally we don't talk about vectors being in an arbitrary vector space being perpendicular to each other. Instead, we use the term orthogonal to capture the properties that a perpendicularity have. <coughs> Excuse me. So the takeaway that you want here is the de definition of orthogonal. And we will now look at some more properties of orthogonal sets of vectors in the second part of today's lecture.